I'm Miss Shireen, and I want to tell you that I love summer because summertime is a great time to have all those summer fruits like strawberries and pineapples and watermelon. Now there is a really neat fruit that you might be acquainted with, but the first time you see it, you might say, oh, yucky, because it's got fuzzy fur on the outside and it's small like an egg, or the size of an egg, maybe a little bit larger. And when you open it up, it's this yucky green color with seeds all around. It looks like this. It's called a kiwi. And originally, kiwi comes from New Zealand. Now, God gives us wonderful fruits in the summertime. Kiwi's one of them. If you ever have mom and dad go to the grocery store, have them buy you a kiwi. When it's soft, it's ready to eat. And you'll find that it's very sweet. Now on our chart here, it says God speaks to us sometimes in unusual ways. I want to tell you a story. And it's a most unusual story. Now if mom and dad could read to you the story. It comes from Numbers 22. This story is about King Balak and a prophet called Balaam. Now King Balak is from Moab and he saw a strange group of people come into his territory and he thought, I don't want these people from Egypt to come and conquer me like they did some of the other nations that I've heard about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this prophet called Balaam and ask him to curse those people because when Balaam curses the people, they won't be able to win against me. So that's what he did. He went and got a group of his ambassadors, went over to Balaam's house to ask Balaam to come and curse the people. Now he did not realize, King Balak did not realize that those people that were camped near his country were the Israelites, God's people. When the king's ambassadors went to uh, Balaam's house, they told Balaam, we have a bunch of money for you. If you would come to our country to see the king, and the king will give you this money to curse those people that are out there on the edge of our country. But you know, Balaam knew that God didn't want him to go. So initially he said, no, I'm not going. But you know, he really wanted the money. So the next time when another group of ambassadors came, with more money, he did go with them. You know, he saddled up his donkey and he started off to go with these men back to the king, King Balak, in order to curse the people. Now, as he went, you know, God was not happy with it. God was not happy at all. And what happened, in, as the Bible says, the donkey went along with Balaam on top of him, and the donkey saw an angel of God standing in the pathway. And my eyes are wide open because this angel had a sword drawn, and the sword was aiming right at Balaam, his master who was sitting on top of him. The donkey saw the angel of the Lord, and the donkey was much afraid, so he stepped out of the path into the field. And the ba Balaam was mad. Oh, he was so mad. He took his stick and he whacked the donkey and hit the donkey and made the donkey go back on the, the pathway so that the donkey would go on. But the donkey saw the angel of the Lord again. And this time, it was on the pathway with two walls side by side. Well, the donkey didn't know what to do, so the donkey went as close as he could to the wall so he could not be in the path of that angel of the Lord with a 
the drawn sword. And again, Balaam was so angry, he took his stick and whacked the poor donkey again and made the donkey go on. The third time it happened, it was on a small path. This time, the donkey could not go off the path into a field. He could not go next to a wall. The path was so narrow that he couldn't go anywhere. And that angel of the Lord was standing right in front of him with his sword drawn, ready to kill his master. So you know what the donkey did? The donkey sat down, just sat down, so that he wouldn't go on. Oh, Balaam was so angry. He was so angry at the donkey. He took the stick and whacked the poor donkey again and again. And God, God did something miraculous. I gotta show you this picture. This picture shows what God did. Can you see, this is Balaam's donkey, and you see this, this thing that's up here? Guess what, the donkey started talking talking the way we talk. And the donkey said, Master, have I ever done this before in all the time that I've worked with you? Have I ever in all these years done that? And Balaam was so angry, you know, he didn't even realize that the donkey was talking to him. But Balaam said, no, you've never done, done that before. And if I had a sword, I would kill you. That's how mad I am. And then, all of a sudden, Balaam's eyes were open. And guess what he saw? He saw that angel of the Lord with his sword drawn, ready to kill him. And this is what the Bible says. The angel said, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? If if the donkey had not saved you these three times, I would have killed you and let the donkey go. Wow, isn't that miraculous? The angel of the Lord was there to cut off Balaam because Balaam was disobeying God. And the donkey saved him those three times. You know, boys and girls, God talks to us. God wants us to listen to him. And so, boys and girls, one of the best ways to listen to God is through the Bible. Now, the Bible does talk to us and tells us what God wants us to do. And he also talks to us through people, through others who would lead us and guide us, your Bible teachers, your parents, pastor of your church and boys and girls listen to them because they will lead you to the right way now if necessary God will get our attention by having our animals talk to us just like he did with Balaam's donkey but boys and girls right now I want to pray with you and tell you how much God loves you he loves you so much and he cares for you so let's pray Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you want us to listen to you just like you listen to us when we pray. Thank you so much for this story in the Bible. It's so miraculous. Having a talking donkey? Wow. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. There's not a thing that you don't do that, that isn't a part of your love even when it's distasteful or chores or things like school. But thank you, dear Lord, that you do it because you love us. For all the boys and girls who are listening, I pray that you would bless them and help them to know that they matter to you and you love them. It's in Jesus' wonderful name that I pray. Amen. Bye-bye, boys and girls.